getting into Lysychansk is no easy task. Ukrainian forces blew every bridge to the north, south, east and west of the city. There was never much concern for civilian well-being. Lysychansk was always looked down upon by Ukrainian nationalists as an inferior pro-Russian city. No one expected Ukrainian forces in Lysychansk to collapse so quickly and so completely. For two months, Kiev promised Lysychansk wouldn't be broken easily. For two months, Ukrainian troops prepared to mount a defense that would dwarf Mariupol. What is entirely apparent is that Ukrainian troops prepared to defend Lysychansk for months and months everywhere. All over the city there are dugouts and trenches like this. They take a lot of work. Every major intersection in the city is blocked off like this with rows of vehicles confiscated from civilians as well as broken down vehicles. As you can see an intersection and all four roads leading here are blocked off. Something happened. Something happened that forced Ukrainian troops, thousands upon thousands of them, to leave, to flee, sometimes to run. From what we gathered, speaking to locals, this organization was rife. The myriad of Ukrainian units were demoralized and believed that they were being abandoned in Lysychansk. When one unit decided to retreat, it began an avalanche. Eventually, no one was left. The city and its suburbs were liberated entirely in just hours. We knew that in Lysychansk there were a lot of power at the time. And we knew that there were a lot of peace. So that the people did not suffer, we were in the fields, in the small villages. We were forced to go to us. When we got to Lysychansk, we were in the middle of the Lysychansk. The people of Lysychansk are overjoyed. The city is largely intact, no Mariupol here. The fighting has ended and spirits have lifted. Я хочу кричать, кричать и кричать. Довольны. А за остальных я не могу за остальных говорить. Ну вот с близкого все угрожения все настолько. Вы представьте, мы граждане России, вот я и муж. И вот представьте, как нам здесь жилось. Не очень хорошо. Что воюет так вообще? Хочется их на руках держать всех. На руках. Честно слово. Четыре месяца. Мира нам всем, пожалуйста. Это не люди были у нас тут в районе. Если бы мы вас не дождались, я бы не знаю, что с нами было. Но все позади, правда? Да. Я знаю, что вы никогда не уйдете. Мы звали вас днем и ночью. Молились за вас. Unfortunately, it's not entirely over yet. A tremendous amount of mines and booby traps were planted in and around the city. Worse, many Ukrainian troops have gone into hiding and are now being rooted out. This is one of the barracks where Ukrainian troops, the mix of them, slept. There's a variety of different services involved, uh, territorial defense squads as well as regulars, as well as nationalists, all mixed up. Again, they lived in, well, squalid conditions, but in every room that we visit there are military uniforms scattered about and that is a major problem because many of these Ukrainian soldiers as they felt that they were being abandoned 
They, they took off their uniforms, dubbed them, changed them to civilian clothes, and mixed with the local population. Catching them is a matter of time. The city is still being cleared and more being found all the time. But the liberation of Lysychansk is a turning point. Lugansk is now entirely free of Ukrainian troops and the Ukrainian military has demonstrated it is no longer in the fighting shape it once was. Morad Gazdiev, RT, from the Lugansk People's Republic. The site of a tremendous explosion. Just, just look around. Epicenter was here and all the trees were knocked back by a blast that I can't even imagine. And I know that this was very recent because it's like a sauna here. The, the earth itself is, is still smoldering. Touching this, this metal, for example, is like touching a hot kettle. Now this was apparently a Ukrainian uh, truck transporting American shells, M70, uh, 777 shells. Those are artillery that have been provided for Kiev. Here's one of the shells that was scattered in this blast. There's nothing like this in uh, the Ukrainian arsenal or what Ukraine inherited from the Soviet Union. But again, they were apparently hiding in the woods, as many of their troops and forces did around Lysychansk. They were apparently spotted and, and struck. We've found with assistance from the locals, and evidently no one's been here yet. The Russian troops haven't even found this place yet. This is, well, a real fine M549A1 rocket-propelled shells uh, for the M777 uh, how it is supplied by the United States with a lot of pomp to the Ukrainian military. Now, these are improved and more expensive versions. They fly even farther. Over here is evidently the artillery site where, where Ukrainian troops stationed their artillery. More of uh, the M795 shells. These are regular, not rocket-propelled shells. This is all evidently dumped in a hurry. Why? Well, here's the reason. Russian counter-battery fire. Some of the shells laying here had been fitted with fuses for imminent use. The American howitzers here were undoubtedly damaged. They were close to impact craters, but were nevertheless evacuated, apparently urgently, by Ukrainian troops. They left behind everything else. During our short search, we found not only shells, but huge amounts of propellant charges. U.S. Army, Picatinny Arsenal. A huge amount of powder charges in these containers. These are all full. Again, a vast arsenal left behind by Ukrainian troops as they retreated. All of this flown in from the United States to supply the Ukrainian military. Here, between Lysychansk, which Ukrainian troops fled from, and the city of Seversk, we found a network of trenches and fortifications which were also abandoned. Here's another dugout, part of the, uh, the trenches and dugouts, dotting these forested areas. If you look over there, there's another one. We won't go down there's a high chance, it's highly likely, that at least in one of these dugouts there are surprises. Mines or tripwires, booby traps left behind. We'll leave this to professionals. The locals in a small village of two dozen houses want the place cleared as soon as possible. They've had enough of blasts and are glad to see the backs of Ukrainian soldiers. Towards the end, likely fear. Like Lysychansk, this area could have been defended for weeks. But again, Ukrainian soldiers and nationalist fighters choose to flee. Another sign that morale among them is far from what it was. Morad Gazdiev, RT, from the Lugansk People's Republic.